All right, everybody. Good morning. Happy Monday. Hope your week is off to a good start. And we are moving along to our day three selections. We're going to start things off in the fourth round here with Anthony Bradford, a right guard that we picked very early in day three, right within that first, what was it, five or six selections made in that on that day. And I'll tell you, we're going to go over the numbers first, like we I've typically done in this series, but I will say that when we get to talking about Anthony Bradford as a player, what he actually does on a football field and what he should be able to do for us, this was a guy who grew on me the more I looked into him, maybe more so than anybody else in this class so far. So not to say he's my favorite player in this class, not to say that everyone else is disappointing to me, but Bradford went from a guy that I was just kind of fine with to a guy who I think is going to work very well for us over the course of my looking into his game a little bit deeper. So, uh, he's going to be 22 years old when the season starts, so still relatively young. Um, if you take a look at his measurables, you'll see that he he's all over the place in terms of his measurables. Six foot four and a quarter is just above average for um, NFL guards who go through the combine process, 60th percentile. He's very heavy for an interior offensive lineman, which you would expect from a right guard. 332 pounds is still 89th percentile, which remember that for a little bit later here when we talk about some of his uh, testing scores. 33 and a half inch arms puts him right in the, well, a little bit above the middle, 58th percentile. And he's got small hands. Nine and a half inch hands is only 20th percentile. <clears throat> now, here's where the fun starts. 508.40 is 87th percentile, so he he can run fast. 174 10-yard split, 84th percentile. So even though this guy is one of the bigger guards to, to go through the combine process, he's also one of the fastest and quickest. So you put those two numbers next to each other, and you have a pretty phenomenal athlete here. This guy moves incredibly well. For being a guy who is this big. He's over 330 pounds. And remember, that's what he weighed in at the combine. For all we know, this guy actually plays a little bit heavier. But these scores are off the charts crazy good. His jumps were good, so he's also explosive. 30-inch vert is actually 77th percentile. 8-foot, 10-inch broad is 76th. Excuse me, 76th. His change of direction is average for the position. 7843 cone, 51st percentile. Um, 4.8 uh, 20 yard shuttle is 45th percentile and 34 bench press reps is 91st percentile. So that stuff is, I mean, the bench press is really, really impressive, but the combination of size, strength, speed, and explosiveness is pretty staggering. And I understand why this guy didn't go until day three, but honestly, I think a big reason why is because he just didn't play that much in college. And I think that if a if an athlete of this caliber were to actually have a career where they started three or four seasons worth of games, he might have been a second round pick. I don't know if that's accurate or not. He obviously would have had to improve as a player, but that combination of athletic traits is really impressive. All right. So the first two years of Bradford's career at LSU, he played a total of 29 defensive snaps across four games. There's really nothing to learn here. He played 28 snaps at right guard and one snap at right tackle. Mostly zone running plays. Didn't get good grades, but it doesn't matter because he didn't play. So I'm not really going to look at any of that. The interesting stuff starts in 2021 when he became a starter during parts of the season, mostly at left tackle. Now, we're talking about a guy here who is 332 pounds, 6 four and a quarter, 33 and a half inch arms. This is not really a left tackle. He played okay, but understand that this year, which we are going to factor into the equation here, he's clearly playing out of position and doing the best that he can. Six games, 259 snaps, 212 of them were at left tackle. He allowed eight pressures, eight pressures, one sack, two penalties. Um, played some snaps at right guard and right tackle as well, but again, mostly left guard. Um... 163 of his reps were pass-blocking ones and 96 were run-blocking one, ones. And of his run-blocking snaps, 
a majority are in zone, but also a decent number in gap. I often talk about how you need to have some zone gap versatility in this offense right now because Waldron wants to do zone, but Carroll loves his uh, A-gap runs. So the versatility is welcome. He got an okay score from PFF. A little better against the pass than he was against the run, but basically just kind of barely above water in both categories. And that gets us to the season that we actually do care about what he did in 2022. This was the year he became a full-time starter and mostly, although not entirely, played at right guard, which is where we're going to play him if we play him. So 13 games for Bradford this year, 815 snaps. So he got basically a full season's worth. And you may notice that that's not a lot of NFL experience. He has like 17 starts across his career and that's going to maybe slow him a bit. However, it may have also allowed us to get a really good player in day three of the draft. Like, he, he might need a year or two for these positive traits to come out. But if this guy had had those positive traits come out more in college, maybe he's a second round pick. He allowed 12 pressures in 13 games, 4 sacks, 2 penalties, which it's not exactly what you want from a right guard, admittedly. It's not. But remember, this was his first full year starting, so I attribute a lot of his issues in his play to just kind of being new. 507 of his snaps were pass-blocking snaps, and 308 of them were run-blocking snaps, so certainly a significant lean to the passing. And you can see that he played two-thirds of his snaps, um, run-blocking snaps in zone, and the other third were gap. So if we are truly going to be running a zone blocking scheme this year, this guy has plenty of experience doing it. Uh, his grades improved a little bit, especially in run blocking. His pass blocking scores actually weren't that good, which makes sense because as a right guard, allowing 12 pressures in 13 games is not exactly what you're looking for. Four sacks is troublesome. But um, after having a chance to look at him and unpack things... I don't know how much I want to really kill him for that. But either way, even if you do want to kill him for that, we're talking about a player here who was in his first full year starting. And these are his totals across his uh, college career. Again, you're really, if you're talking about Bradford really as a Seahawk, you really only want to look at 2022, right? Because you're not going to use him at left tackle. Although I will say the fact that he did play a little bit of left tackle in his career is... Maybe a little encouraging and indicative of the fact that he has a little bit of flexibility, but I definitely don't want to put this guy at left tackle pretty much ever. But hey, better a little bit of flexibility than no flexibility flexibility at all. But played over 1,100 offensive snaps, 21 pressures allowed, 5 sacks, 5 penalties, um, 809 snaps at right guard, almost 300 at left tackle, and you can see way more pass snaps than run block snaps and way more zone running snaps than gap blocking snaps for run plays. But um, again, we're just kind of zoom in on this 2022 season. And you definitely see the bumps. Not doing phenomenally well as a pass blocker. Definitely allowing some leakage into the uh, pocket for a right guard, especially who is typically going up against interior defensive linemen that aren't the superstar edge rushers. But... I gotta say, I'm gonna hold off on my full thoughts on this guy until the video later today, this afternoon, but I was impressed with what I saw when I actually looked at the tape. See you guys later today.